When a permanent magnet is near metal, if there is no motion involved, then the magnet will not interact with the metal whatsoever. What you're looking at here is an example of a permanent magnet in the vicinity of a piece of aluminum. And you can see that by all appearances, the flux lines from the magnet are passing straight through. So if we look at the physical properties to confirm, we can see that the green bar here is set up as neodymium 45 and the blue shape is pure aluminum. And as I mentioned, as a static model, the flux lines simply appear to pass straight through the aluminum. If we were to furthermore attempt to do something like make a induced current plot on the piece of aluminum in this model, what we see is that there is zero current induced in the aluminum in a static situation. The flux is again apparently passing through. For people interested in the very small diamagnetic properties of aluminum, we do have an option that we can turn on in the physics global where we include effects due to very small susceptibility, but by default you will see nothing. However, motion changes a lot. As the magnet begins to move, then you will see eddy currents induced in the aluminum because there is now a time-dependent magnetic field. Now, we can do motion in one sense with a parametric. We can go into the parametric setup, create a parameter that will do a displacement or a rotation of the magnet. The problem with that is that it will still only be studying one configuration at a time. It will say if the magnet was here, if it was here, if it was here. There is no time dependence when you do a parametric study. So in order to do a time dependent study, I have set up another variation of this model. In this variation of the model, if we look in the physics global setup, you'll see that the operation mode is set as rotational transient. And now, if we confirm by the colors again, we still have the neodymium-45 and the aluminum, but we see something new. We see that there is a defined angular velocity on the magnet, and that velocity is 1000 degrees per second about the origin which is down around the end of the magnet. So with this configuration the solver is going to in time steps move the magnet into different angles of rotation and it will track the changes in the flux from one step to another. By doing that, we get the time-dependent behavior associated with the motion of the magnet. So in the solver setup, we can see that there is a transient with a total time given of 0.06 seconds, and it's requested 100 steps to be taken. In the output definitions, you can see that a couple of contour plots have been requested one related to the magnetic flux lines, one related to the induced current. And once the solver has run, you will see the effect of that. Now you may notice that while our default solver is the boundary elements and we use it for most of problems where we can, the default solver for most transient setups is in fact finite elements. And what you see happening here is that every time we rotate the magnet, of course, a new mesh has to be created. So as the solver proceeds, we're seeing the mesh updating. And as the magnet approaches the aluminum, you'll see that the mesh it starts getting denser in the aluminum because we'll start seeing more substantial flux changes in the aluminum, deflux by D time, and therefore the mesh will need to get much denser there.
This is, of course, a very simple model. The intent is not to get you caught up in the details of the application, but to be looking at the type of physics and the type of setup that is being done. So now that the parametric has run, we can see that the magnet has rotated by some amount in total and two contour plots are available. Now the outputs were set up to take occasional screen captures of these contour plots. So if we look at step one, what we can see is the flux lines as the magnet is in the zero degree position. And you can see that due to the motion, there is already some induced current in the piece of aluminum up here. And if we step through the different plots, you can see that as the magnet rotates, that pattern changes. If we turn on an animation of the results, then you will see the current density in the aluminum increasing as the magnet comes close. And it, it becomes most intense where the flux from the tip of the magnet is changing the most rapidly. So this model demonstrates for you then how to set up an analysis which involves eddy currents induced by motion. In this case, rotational motion. The Orsteb program that you're looking at also has a mode for doing translational motion.